Uh, I'm Dr. Henry Nasrallah. I'm a professor and chairman of the Department of Neurology and Psychiatry, a combined department at St. Louis University School of Medicine in St. Louis. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, a psychopharmacologist uh, with a focus on schizophrenia and the antipsychotics. I uh, have done the FDA studies on uh, all the atypical antipsychotics and uh, both their efficacy and safety and, and tolerability uh, and, uh, and their use in multiple psychiatric, uh, neuropsychiatric disorders, uh, brain disorders manifesting with psychosis. Because I'm a neuropsychiatrist, uh, I, I treat uh, psych all psychotic disorders, including those associated with neurological disorders. Uh, there are people differentiate the primary psychiatric disorders like schizophrenia and bipolar disorder uh, compared to patients who develop psychosis following a neurological disorder. Although they're all brain disorders, uh, but somehow they're artificially separated. Parkinson's disease is one of those neurological conditions well-known disorders of the brain uh, manifesting with rigidity and movement disorders and the difficulty walking. Uh, uh, it, it's a progressive degenerative disorder and most people think of it as a uh, disorder of motor movement and, and, and yet there isn't much recognition of the fact that a substantial proportion of patients with Parkinson's disease develop psychotic symptoms. And what we mean by psychosis is uh, Perceptual abnormalities like hearing voices, hallucinations of auditory hallucinations, visual hallucinations, even olfactory hallucinations or gustatory hallucinations, all the senses. Uh, but the most common are visual and uh, auditory. And, uh, and the other type of psychotic feature are uh, delusions, which are really fixed false beliefs. Uh, when a patient, uh, let's say paranoia is an example of a fixed false belief, that when a patient is convinced that somebody is out to harm them when that's not true, um, but, they, but they're totally convinced and you cannot talk them out of it. Those are the kind of symptoms that can occur in patients with Parkinson's disease, uh, which is a progressive disorder, and it tends to, sometimes it shows early on in the illness, but most of the time in the, in the mid middle phase and the later phases, uh, it, it, it emerges with or without uh, dopaminergic uh, drugs that are used uh, to, to help patients with Parkinson's disease, which are standard of care, Parkinson's disease, L-dopa being one of the commonest, of course, but there are others. But it can, uh, psychotic symptoms can emerge as part of Parkinson's disease even without the uh, medications, uh, independent of medications. Um, and many patients are not aware of, of it initially uh, and may not even share it with the physicians uh, who treat them. It's important for a neurologist treating Parkinsonian patients to always ask the family members if they notice that, the, that their loved one is, uh, is talking to somebody in the room when there's nobody around talking to themselves or if they accuse the family of stealing stuff or, uh, or if they suspect that their spouses are cheating on them, you know, there any kind of number of uh, delusions may occur uh, and the family can usually Trans transmit this information to the physician in a reliable fashion if the patient does not. Uh, and once the, those symptoms are found to be present, then uh, the physicians must, uh, must treat the patient for those uh, symptoms. Uh, in the past, uh, the only, the only uh, available treatments for such uh, psychotic symptoms are the same medications that are used for schizophrenia, which are called antipsychotic medications, of course. And those antipsychotic medications themselves, because they block dopamine receptors, D2 receptors, they can cause Parkinsonism, symptoms that look exactly like Parkinson's disease due to medication side effects. And we call that iatrogenic, drug-induced Parkinsonism.